Hello everyone, this is our uh, first show. This is the unofficial uh, Talking Badlands show. Uh, we just watched the first episode. Now, this is not uh, affiliated with AMC. Uh, they don't have a Talking Badlands uh, show right now, but if they did, I would love to be the host and as well <laughs> and everything. Um, all right, got, my name is Gavin Morse. Uh, some of you guys know me as Shinto Shiranu Cosplay. Um, if you guys follow me here on my YouTube page, uh, I do gaming. I kind of do a couple of movie reviews. I'm, I'm getting started up as well as I'm a cosplayer. You can check my Facebook page, same name. I'll have the link below uh, and some other things. Um, you guys also might know me if you've all watched uh, one of the other pages I'm affiliated with, uh, Strong Path Productions. I am the uh, business uh, person, one of the writers. I'm also the... Um, the fight choreographer as well as the uh, director for anybody who comes on uh, in on acting wise I do the auditions a uh, little history about myself real quick also personally um, I'm a martial arts instructor been taking for 20 years this past August uh, I'm a fifth degree black belt in Taekwondo I'm also a green belt in a style called Hamudo and I'm gonna let my co-host explain a little bit about himself real quick hello everyone my name is Gary Morris uh, Shinto over here, you'll hear him call me Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a student of the martial arts. Martial arts that I study is Taekwondo. Like my son Shinto over here, I've been studying for over 20 years. I'm a fourth degree in this style. Also, I help teach along with him. Also, I'm a third degree in a Korean, a new Korean martial art. No, no, no green belt. You're mm -hmm. green belt. Yeah, right. A green belt in a new martial art. You said third degree. Third degree. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wished. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's Han Mudo. Uh, well, I'll explain about this, the martial arts style. So, okay, first off, talking about um, Badlands, all right? Uh, just getting on to the basic sum up of it. If you've watched it, it basically sits there and it takes place after a major catastrophe. We don't know if it's. Uh, viral, you know, like some kind of plague came through, like the Black Plague, or if it was some kind of massive war. They sit there, they say they, they kind of hint on it might kind of be in a little bit of both, but it's haven't been really been talked about yet, especially in the first episode. So we know it happens at least, I would have to say, no less than a hundred years after all this, okay? Um, first thing you kind of see some, some roses, uh, they look like roses. But you see the main character riding a motorcycle and everything. As you can kind of tell, the motorcycle is kind of more old school. So very much the vehicles in this one are very much a lot older. Not like we have nowadays with all the electronics. You kind of see little small hints of electronics in there, but not as much. It's more of a rarity. So like this right here, this would be like a super ultra rarity right now. The, I mean, the car. Also the technology, from what I've noticed, along with the motorcycle and the truck that's flipped over right there at the very first, which had what's called the cogs in it, i.e. slaves. Uh, it was pre-1960s, so it had very little computer-type stuff in it. Right. With that saying is, it's a lot easier to keep up. You can replace partial lights easier, part breaks down. Instead of, oh, we got to replace it and everything, they can probably clean it up a little bit, melt it down, and get the minerals out and make something new out of it. Uh, that's one thing about the older vehicles. Now, uh, in the first scene, as he said, just said, the cogs, which uh, the main character is in it, is Sonny. Um, he's got the red dust tr uh, style trench coat. Comes up there to a group of uh, nomads, bandits, whatever you want to call them, thugs, which they kind of look like thugs. Um, very reminiscent of the uh, very 20, early 20th century, you know, a little, not not Western people, but, you know, they have a little bit of education and everything. Kind of reminds me of the way they were dressed is, if anyone ever seen Gangs of New York, they kind of had that feel about them. Uh, Independent gang. Mm-hmm. Uh, Probably guns for hire. You know, he's, at, he's asking what happened, and we see the first. We see the first guy attacked. Is swinging away. Does a little martial arts and everything. Sonny is just kind of staying relaxed, moving off to the side. Kills the guy. Next thing you know, everyone's surrounding him. This is probably the, uh, one of the most interesting things I've seen. Is I've been a fan of martial arts movies since I was a real, real little. Uh, I've always enjoyed them. I noticed the past couple years, especially in Hollywood, not really that. 
that good as per se as they could be. You see a lot more in your independent YouTube films. Um, Thousand Pounds Productions from California. Check them out. They do some really good martial arts. Uh, very much know, um, known for doing the Street Fighter X Namco live action of uh, five minute little promo. Very good. Uh, it kind of reminded me of that. Uh, you see the guy surround Sonny. Sonny gets into a fighting stance, which kind of looks more like Chinese, a Chinese martial arts. I don't know which. I don't know a lot about Chinese martial arts. I know basic about Kung Fu, but I don't know uh, which exactly one. It wasn't Tai Chi or... Um, I know that much. But we see him very much... Um, help me out, help me he out. Does, he does a lot of... A lot of what I've noticed, uh, karate type moves, quick and to the point moves, a lot of death moves. He gave him a chance there at the first one. He took the sword off his back, took the sunglasses off, and walked up to talk to him. And then they figured, well, there's nothing to him. We're gonna we're gonna try. Right. Then that's something I did notice is it's very much directed to point martial arts. All the moves you see is what you would practice on if you take a traditional style. This isn't like what you would see um, most people who practice in a gym and want to practice MMA. Nothing against anybody who does that. One of my former students uh, does MMA now. Uh, but I'm a traditionalist. This really shows for us who love the traditional martial arts what it can do, what it was really meant to do. Direct to the point. Every technique gives him a chance. Once he gets aggressive, every technique uh, injures. It's bone breaking, internal organs, uh, bleeding, uh, or death move. Uh, I see, I've seen maneuvers that he's pulled that I don't see in films. Uh, lifts his leg up, bring it straight down the guy's head. Called Nats kick. A lot of people don't practice that in the martial arts. They don't see any use for it. It's a ground kick. It's meant to kill the person. Um, I will say probably one of the most brutal scenes out of all that is not the people getting stabbed, not even the wrists getting broke at one point. I mean, that hurt. But the guy who does the thrust kick pushes his foot forward and really just kind of pushes it like this. You see him grab it and twist it. Um, as I'm breaking his foot and ankle. Breaking his foot and ankle. I've sprained both my ankles before. I've heard bones, my bones break in competitions just from people doing forms, katas, pooms, whatever you want to call them, and it, it, something will just break. I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a shin literally get split in half, and it, that's the grossest thing I've ever heard, but I will say this, they got the sounds right, and that hurt just to watch it. Just to watch. Knowing what the move did. Yeah, he rolls the guy over uh, a little bit on the ground, then he lifts the guy's legs up over his head, breaking the bottom part of his back. Uh, might not kill him, but he probably died of shock because that's a massive amount of pain. Um, I mean, you can live for, for that, but you'd be paraplegic for the rest of your life. I mean, he... If you're lucky. Yeah, I mean, most likely quadriplegic. But, uh, probably died from the shock of pain. Uh, as it goes on, we kind of get a little bit more of what's going on. Badlands, alright? It's a massive area run by seven barons, seven or warlords. It's kind of got a, very much of an old... Feudal. Thank you, feudal. And this reason why I got my co-host, because I have blabber <laughs> on. Alright. Uh, very much kind of a uh, feudal system. Uh, as we can see, after uh, Sonny set, uh, finds out who, what, who they were looking for, it's this boy, we don't know much about him yet. I can't remember his name on top of my head. I'll have it for next time. I have notes uh, right up here is that he takes him to the Baron. Now we see everyone, uh, we see a bunch of people cutting off little uh, plants. A lot of people don't know what that is. I'm Those like, are poppies and what they were doing when they had a knife, they were getting the juice from the poppy, which anybody knows anything about. Drugs and the heroin, they were taking the juice and then they'll process it so that they can get their heroin. Heroin. Uh, and that's something else you can kind of tell the barons into drug dealing, which is a major commodity, even in older times, especially around the uh, turn of the 19th century. Opium was a, was a big, was one of the big drugs, especially over in uh, eastern countries. Um, yeah, and then they imported it here. Yeah, imported here in the uh, early 20th century, especially in like uh, New York, um, California. In California, yeah, especially, especially California. In California. Um, but getting you know, on, we found out the baron. 
a little bit of a jerk in my opinion. He uh, basically recruits people like the old um, Southern, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as an example. Okay, all right. Yes, I'm a fan of Naruto. All right. Holds this said this book, you know, and everything reminds me of the very much religious, righteous people. My way is the right way. Now I, I'm gonna let everybody know if this offends you. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I'm sorry. Get over it. All right. I'm a Christian. Okay. Boom. We we, we both are. All right. If you're not, that's fine. You you have the right to believe what you believe. Okay. That's one thing about living where we live. We don't judge. Okay. That's one thing about us. But he had that this way is the right way type of religious righteousness attitude. Um, this arrogance. Arrogance. That's how he was speaking. My way is the right way. You follow me, you'll get this, this, this. There is no God because, uh, but there is me, the Baron, egotistical, slight mangle maniac. Uh, if you guys want to mangle maniac, is he kind of thinks himself like he's above God, um, but it's also a type of control. Get the, uh, the people to basically run up that hill. Yes, Baron, run up. Boom, they're all dead. Okay, those fifty are dead. All right, let's figure out a plan. Making pawns out of them. You see a bunch of them uh, who are training in a martial art, which looked like a form of Shaolin um, Kung Fu at the very beginning uh, when he was bringing them in. I'm skipping around a little bit, but looks they like were practicing. they were practicing because there's no guns. Uh, personally, that I, would, I wouldn't mind that. Um, I like blade weapons, but that's me. Uh, I do like guns, but um, I, I, don't I like guess them. we'll figure out the reason for that later. Uh, Everybody that ran out of bullets, or at least they ran out of the ability to make all the fine intricacies associated with the guns. Of course, I may have forgotten how to make even black powder. I don't know. I'm sure we're going to find out the, the reasoning behind that. Mm -hmm. Kind of also get the feeling that there's a feud on in the family. His son, his oldest son, his only son, is basically mad at him because he sent Sonny. Who is his head clipper? Which I forgot to tell you. That's uh, basically the soldiers. Um, he's a regent. He's the head knocker. Um, and it says that Sonny is the most well known of all the re of all the clippers and regents because he has killed more people than anybody, um, as, as viciously too, direct to the point. Um, so there's jealousy too because he's his pseudo son. Right. Uh, he's, he's what his. He would like for his son to be. Right. Uh, we don't know the whole reason why. Um, his son very much looks like a a business person. Doesn't I'm not saying he can't defend himself, haven't seen anything yet, but at the same time he looks like he would backstab it in his way through. Um, we know there's a feud between him and his wife because he's about to take a second wife, which they're allowed to do. Uh, he's not monogamous, so polygamy seems to be an okay thing, which I'm, I'm sorry, guys are very much vengeful, but women, cat fight, that's, I, I'm waiting for because she looks like she's very cunning, uh, getting on into the barons. We don't know much about any of the barons, except the fact is that uh, there's the baron there, and then there's the baroness, uh, who supposedly killed her husband, and she, so she became in charge. She has the oil to power the factories to make opium. From the poppy uh, plants, which is or a or whatever they're making, that whatever they're making. So it seems like each baron has a certain little thing the other barons need to make the final product. So there's either some kind of trade or going on. We know it's uh, the widow because the fact is she, there was coins with her insignia on it. Um, getting on and uh, well, the butterfly that was her insignia. Her insignia. As uh, as it kind of progresses, we kind of get the feeling that Sonny's kind of wanting to change a little bit. Uh, his girlfriend, who seems to be a doctor, is pregnant with his child. You know, she's trying to teach him how to read also at the same time, which is a uh, funny thing is he says, I like Cat in the Hat better. That was kind of a funny little thing to me, due to the fact is we're all little. We was like, we just go back to reading Cat in the Hat. Uh, there's a couple of small puns in there. But the biggest uh, thing is he can't. he's not supposed to have kids. It's forbidden. So I guess they would all be killed, or she would be killed, and Sonny might be punished. I don't. We don't know yet. Well, the reason for that is he, his mind would be elsewhere. He wouldn't be concentrating on one hundred percent on being loyal to his Baron. Right, and of course, you know you're supposed to be loyal to the Baron. Um, 
even in that's totally different even from even like the feudal lord systems where they, they would allow you to have a family as long as you still serve them you know because in terms of if you have a child you can train your child to be the next whatever whatever uh philosophy is different different uh getting into the final stuff and we'll get to cinematography real quick and location and we'll end up the show for tonight uh second major fight scene it's in the rain uh very much reminds me of some of like you know you, you will have a bunch of guys jump you uh you can kind of tell it's on the close sets uh but it reminded me very much of an old-fashioned western shooter almost battle of the OK Corral as he said near it mm, excuse me you really couldn't see a lot of the people's faces in it which is probably a good thing due to the fact is that they're probably going to be used later on but the fight scenes this one's more was, is with swords it's really the first weapon scene was Sonny so he's got a um a katana on his back uh, uh, that he has with his right hand a wakasha on his uh left side. That was, a, that was a sword that was just a little bit shorter. shorter. That's right. traditional uh, Japanese. You see one person seems to have a Tai Chi style sword, a straight blade, but I think he gets taken out like first. Uh, I have to look at the scene a little bit more. The fight scene actually went really good. There was some wire work involved in it. Very, very good. Very good. You could not tell. Yeah, I could not tell. Unless you know. Could not tell on the wire work. Um, probably one of the funniest scenes of that fight scene is where uh, the guy gets kicked through uh, the door. They fight a little bit, and then son gets kicked out uh, through another uh, through a window. I, I'm I'm sorry. That reminds me of old-fashioned brawl fight scenes, what I've seen in a couple of old western movies. Um, the fight scene very much right there was very close, very well very well choreographed. They had I mean even with blunted swords, um, you miss. That's gonna hurt. Um, I've messed with blunted swords before. So I get whacked with all that. Yeah, it hurts, and it hurts more because of the fact that it's a fine point, and uh, you still stab something. You still stab through them with it. It's not that hard. Uh, the choreography, like I said, was good. I mean, this wasn't like them just throwing their legs up or whatever. I mean, it was directly everything was precise, direct to the point. The guys go down one after another. Uh, the guy at the very end was very good, um, but they all died. Uh, you kind of get the point that there it was a setup uh, to test his skills. Also, to, also the bird is wanting to run him over, and she tells him, "Say, whenever you're ready, you know, just come on, let me know." Right now, that's now getting on to the boy. He uh, say the boy seems to have some kind of amulet or a little necklace that shows where he once lived. Sonny has a uh, takes it from him because. Uh, Basically, a boy sits there said, this is mine. No, that's not mine. They fight over it. So he takes it. Pretty much like a principal would take away, you know, your Nintendo uh, Game Boy. Yeah. Game Boy. <laughs> All right. Sonny has a compass with the same picture and uh, later finds out that's the boy's home. Uh, after, But before that, he finds out the two boys that got to the other boy uh, punched him. Very much punches him, you know, like, you know, oh, da, 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 like in the bathroom area. Draws blood. Draws blood. The boy's eyes go white and full black. The next day we know the boy gets the boy through uh, into a mirror. A piece of glass comes up. He catches it, throws it right back. Which is like shuriken. 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 Uh, which is technically human impossible because you can't catch it and throw something like that. I mean, that's why they do the slow down motion on that. Hits the boy in the eye and says, like, what happened? He tells him that's reason why I'm out here, my mother uh, took me from my home because every time I draw blood, somebody get hurt or be dead, and there was a healer, we lost track of each other, so the boy's looking for his mother. Um, he doesn't know why, he just knows it happens. It happens, so the boy has some kind of hidden power that was most likely is what everybody wants. Uh, and Sonny's barrenness noticed Sonny when Sonny was outside and helped the boy escape. She knows that there's something behind it. She knows something about that amulet. Which if you notice the amulet, it shows uh, big buildings, not just a little bitty house, but big, big like skyscrapers. And the one that Sonny has, it's the same type of amulet except it's mounted on a uh, compass. And at the back 
the very back of the uh, scene of the ambulance behind the uh, buildings you see a sun. This leads me to believe that if he goes toward the sun east along with the help of the compass that he will find what he's looking for. I'm just speculating. I don't know that for sure. That's just the way it came across to me. Yeah, uh, so basically it's some kind of uh, you know, some type of direction to go to. Right. To go through the Badlands or whatever they may be. Alright. Um, Paul Reese wants Sonny to uh, help him escape because the boy is young. He's about 14, 15 years old. He wants to get his amulet back. That was his mother's. So he gets caught because uh, the Baron's son has it. Um, basically, and that's when he's like he, uh, Dad was saying that the uh, she recognizes the amulet. She looks at the amulet. She kind of has a smirk on his face. Sonny basically makes a choice. I'm going to help this boy out. Something out of character. Probably because the fact is he's with his girlfriend. He's starting to have regrets. You know, um, his sister and sister to get like more marks on his back, tattoos. That you know, the tattoo guy said even after a while, even a killer will start to, you know, if a kill, basically saying he's starting to, it's starting to affect him more. He's killed so many people and everything. You talk to anybody who is a, uh, quit shaking your leg, please. <laughs> he's shaking the floor everybody it's driving me insane okay basically what it is after a while even somebody who's in the military um top to you know cops he's also a retired deputy sheriff everybody anyone who's actually had a kill it does after a while affect you uh you know many people in the military uh know a lot has of to be some type of uh, decompression to get away some uh for a short time, and if you if you're not, it seems like Sonny's not. Since like I said, boom, boom, he's always having to do it. It's going to affect you. Either you're going to start getting really depressed or anything, or you're just psychotic. Which Sonny does not seem psychotic. Sonny seems he actually has a soul. Um, just like notches on a gun, right? Uh, even gunslingers, they sit there and they uh, read any old things about gunslingers. They said the last couple of years, you know, last twenty years, you know, they didn't pick up a gun because they didn't want to, you know. It's like, I'm done. I, I can't do it anymore. It, it's bothering me. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone. Now it's affecting them. Probably seeing the dead and ghosts or something. Um, let's get into a little bit about the Badlands. Don't know where it's being shot at. I wish I did. We know, uh, going on to another show, The Walking Dead is being shot a lot in Georgia, which is actually the state over. We're in Alabama. Uh, I was actually at Dragon Con when they were shooting the Atlanta one of uh, the scene in Atlanta, and we could never find the location, which dragged me insane. Because I just wanted to be a zombie. I didn't care if I just got tacos for dinner. <laughs> okay? I was like, I want to be a zombie in it. Nobody could find the location. I think they were trying to kind of keep it a little hush hush because, you know, so many people want it to, to, to be in it. Um, but they sit there and said, if you can find it, they'll let you in. But basically, we don't know where it's being shot at. I'm, my speculation is just the way the wilderness is looking. I have to say it might be somewhere in Mississippi. Um, just, just the way I'm looking at how the plant, the, just the landscape is. It's probably somewhere between the Mississippi and Louisiana line. That's what I'm thinking. It's down along the coast because you'll see along the coast you'll see trees covered in that type of moss. Yeah. Um, Okay, what are they called? Weeping willow trees? No. Oak trees mostly. Oak trees, okay. Uh, getting into... They call it Spanish moss. Okay. Uh, getting into real quick the cinematography of it. Very well done. The camera angles are... I know some people are like, ah, oh, camera angles. Oh, that's the new thing. It's just to make things look, look... Blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't have a degree in cinematography, okay? But I can sit there and say I'm seeing a combination of old school and new school. New school aspects that has what come across what everybody does now with when after 300 came out they do the hit in slow motion I'm not seeing a lot of that I'm only seeing like some of the high flying stuff uh, but I'm also seeing the whole fact is far away view so you can see the whole action which is very reminiscent of the older kung fu movies where they used to do like a, a shot from right here and used to alright everyone action and they they go off like three or four minutes straight and just keep on going around uh, Kind of seen a little bit of that. Um, seeing some close-ups, some slow motion, um, just on the fight scenes, very well because it's fluid, and that's the whole thing. Is most martial arts, you can kind of see where they took a break, 
uh, they didn't, they have, I did a test video uh, about a month ago on a fight scene with a friend of mine, uh, and it's a lot harder than what you think, I mean, the setup, we got, we, uh, uh, the story was good, but they had the fluidity of it, uh, from Not the, everything in sync, that's the problem. Yeah, and that's hard everything to do. Everything like a little tick off, it's like a little, a little hiccup. It didn't, it flowed, it was like very much smooth, so... I can go and say they're doing the takes basically about 15, 20, maybe even 50 times. So by the time they're done with it, they're tired. I mean, just a five minute scene, I mean, push like this, it could take six to seven hours. But the only thing is, um, daylight. So they're, you got to think of, they're practicing. Like they know this scene forward and backwards. They're practicing four to five days before they do ahead. shoot ahead for this one little fight scene. Okay? If they're inside, they have more time, like the, the water scene. They probably had a lot of time with the water scene. Probably because they probably slipped and fell and something slipped out of their hands. That, I, I could tell that was on set. If it wasn't on set and they did it at night, that was really good. Um, but that, especially that first scene, that was done out in the daylight. So they only had probably about two hours to shoot that. So basically, you got to think of it like this. Okay, all right, we got to do another shot. Okay, we we'll get a get over here, get a swig of water that you need it, um, uh, dry him off, you know, get, get the sweat off his face, all right, everyone ready, boom, boom, let's go. So two hours of that, that's constant. As a martial arts instructor uh, who has done live action fight choreography uh, for demonstrations, um, I've had to practice three hours before, and if I only do five minutes on a, um, before I te right after I tested for my third degree black belt, Halfway between tests for my fourth degree black belt, I had to do a uh, fight choreography scene, a uh, demonstration. And I did my poom, did some breaks, did a fight choreography. I worked on it for about three months to get it down pat, probably because I had music in. We practiced for three hours a lot. They hated me, but we looked good. I mean, we looked really good. Uh, the one thing I can also sit there and say is that these guys have excellent control, but they're also making content, something that Hollywood does not want to do with AMC is able to get away with, like this. All right, but they're actually making a little, I'm going to actually hit them on the arm, a little thump. All right, it doesn't hurt that much. We're used to it. I mean, you're going to have bruises and everything, but a good fight scene, you're, you're going to be walking off sore. I mean, you're going to wake up the next day and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so hurting right now. So they probably did a fight scene one day. Okay, we're just going to do normal stuff this day so you can kind of recover a little bit. Um, very much scene set up right now is very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what else is going to go on. Uh, anything you want to add? Well, going back to the fight scene, people that don't understand it, one way that you could understand it, just like a football game, I think about those guys getting out there and knocking each other around. It's like college football for an hour out on the field. And yet they'll have four or five days of practice, and they're sore and they get hurt. Sorry, everyone. That was my mom picking in. She didn't know what we were doing. I'm sorry about that. I'll let her know next time. <laughs> uh, so mom's gonna be on the internet for about two seconds. Um, uh, we'll, uh, we're about to uh, wrap this one up. Uh, one thing I will sit there and say is, which kind of leads into a little bit of the next episode. The Baron's been having some headaches. Um, Probably noticed he was. Smoking a pipe. Well, anybody that knows anything about drugs knows that was an opium pipe, which that makes smoking marijuana nothing. That's highly, highly addictive, and it will eventually kill you. Right, so we don't know if the headaches are coming from him taking too much opium or he has something else wrong with him. You can kind of tell because he's holding his head like this and everything, kind of hearing a ringing. Anybody who has any type of has head trauma or has had anything wrong, uh, around the neck or anything, you'll hear a ring. You'll have shots of pain where you where you will hear exact ring. And I've uh, I've had a ladder fall on my head before. Okay, right here. All right, and trust me, I had a slight concussion and yeah, I heard ring and I couldn't hear properly for about a week. I missed some blocks and got kicked in the head too a couple of times. Doing some spar matches. Had that happen, and it rang for fifteen or twenty minutes. Yeah, I did that the last time too. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, after we watch the next episode, we'll have another video up. Uh, the videos are kind of come in succession the next uh, next couple of times till we get caught up. Once we get caught up, and after Sunday's episode comes on, which 
guys, right now it's uh, December 16th. Um, I've been kind of behind because of my uh, work schedule right now, but we're going to watch, get, get caught up. We'll have another video up. Once we get fully caught up, we're going to uh, work on trying to get my get my actual camera up and we'll do this more in a professional setting setup. I'll probably do it downstairs or, or I might even do one or two outside talking about the episode. Um, if you have it, please leave some comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some questions. We'll answer. Might even answer some questions on air next time. Best we can. Best we can. Uh, if you know, if you see something we don't know about, uh, please leave a message. And I mean, like, but please, no spoilers, please. No spoiler. Oh uh, yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> I will. I will remove all comments from all videos if I see spoilers. If I see any negative talking on uh, on my page. On any uh, any video I'm associated with, I will I will stop comments. I'm not gonna put up with that. Be respectful of anybody who leaves a comment. Don't call them stupid. Don't call them names. Grow up, you adults. If you're not adults and your kids, grow up because in the real world that will get you hurt. Uh, that's one of my golden rules. Be respectful. Uh, last thing is, if you haven't seen uh, Into the Badlands, I suggest you see it. If you're a martial arts um, fan or a martial artist, definitely see it. Um, like this, everyone's loved the Matrix when it came out. Fight scenes are better than the Matrix. Uh, and if you like AMC's Walking Dead, watch it. It's just something different. All right, uh, all right. This is uh, one other thing too. A disclaimer here. Uh, parents, this is not a children's show. Anybody under, I would say, 15 years of age. Needs to have a parent with them. Needs to have a parent with them. With them watching it. Watching. Okay. Uh, that's just our personal uh, preference on that. Uh, if I was 15 years old, he'd be watching it with me. Uh, well, he's watching it with me anyway. But um, not everyone's the same. If you're a young kid, get 10, your, 11, 12 years old. No. If you're if you're if you're one of the younger viewers who who's on Watch my page, it yourself, and then you decide for your child. Yeah, uh, tell your parents, hey, can I see this Into the Badlands? It's not really bloody, but there is some blood in it. Uh, but it's more the thought process. It's not as bloody as Walking Dead, by, by, by no means. So it's not as not gory, but it's very much more of an adult show. It's more realistic. Thank you. All right, uh, all right everyone, so that's the uh, first one of talking uh, Badlands um, today. I'm Gavin Morse. And I'm Gary Morse. Dan. <laughs> okay, and uh, thank you everyone, and have a great night.